Good morning, folks. Today we're going to be looking at new videos from Sky Scholar, Solar Forcing of the Upper Atmospheric Dynamics, and the Solar Flare Magnetic Crochet Effect on Earth. But we're starting, as always, with the last 24 hours on our star where solar activity has been very quiet. Despite the eruptive potential, it has been a calm few days in terms of space weather, no significant flaring or CME production, solar wind and geomagnetic conditions are calm. We've got sunspots, filaments, and coronal holes, and we'll start looking with the active regions. You can see here where the flare flashing is coming from, pretty much staying within the C-class range. And those two areas where the brightness is occurring are where the sunspots are. They haven't done a ton in terms of energetic activity, but there is magnetic mixing. And that group on the left continues slowly growing in size and in umbral count. We'll be watching there today, as well as for the plasma filaments, the thin dark ropes you see here with eruptive potential, while the larger dark patches are the coronal holes and their enhanced solar wind could arrive here at Earth in the next 36 hours before the end of Sunday. We'll be watching that too. Quick slide over to Sky Scholar where two new videos are out. Interestingly, it's the In Memoriam video for John Wilkins we recommend this morning. There's a lot more than a goodbye to a friend in that video. Trust me. Up next, we're coming to the middle atmosphere, the mesosphere and thermosphere. And they're showing here how solar activity has a dramatic effect on the winds and circulation patterns. This is important because not only do those control heating dynamics in the vertical segment of the atmosphere, but they impact pressure cells, hurricanes, jet streams, atmospheric electricity, and more. Lastly, on the article front, we find one on the solar flare magnetic crochet. While normally the solar wind particles are what cause a geomagnetic storm response, often from a coronal hole or CME, sometimes the X-ray light from solar flares themselves are enough to cause magnetic disruption. That's what this paper is about, and this concept is why you very often see the technological glitching beginning at the time of the flare rather than waiting for the shock wave to arrive. We've got major events coming at the ranch the next three months. UFO and solstice party is a week away on the 14th. Mini conferences coming the next two months. And there are always smaller events ongoing as well, often kid focused, like tomorrow. As much fun as the observers seem to have at the ranch, they are most shocked by how much we have for their kids to do. Check your calendar, pick a time, come see us, observerranch.com. We greatly appreciate your support. We'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now it's 5.30 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.